Jeanette, great to see you. Thank you. You've relatively recently finished writing a memoir. Yes, it's called Why Be Happy When You Could Be Normal. And we are going to do five <laughs> minutes with Jeanette Winterson now. And if you could possibly count us down when the battery goes in. All right. Whoa, look at that. Four, three, two, one, go. Are you a party goer? <laughs> I love parties because you don't have to talk to too many people. You can just flit from one to the other. What I hate are dinner parties where you have to sit next to some nudnik, oh, that's Jewish for an annoying pest, and you don't want to talk to them and you're forced to all through three courses. That's my idea of hell. Do you listen to pop music? Yes, but my taste in pop music is really bad, so I'll be listening to uh, JLS or Pink. You know, it's, it's, just, it's just not very cool. Tell me about your love for opera. Oh, well, that's serious. Um, I discovered opera oh, 20 years ago by chance and all the hairs on the back of my neck stood on end and I thought, this is everything. It's theatre, it's drama, it's music, it's excitement, it's life and it's life lived so intensely. And since then, I've just gone to see everything and the whole repertoire over and over again. So opera is, is, is it's, in, it's in my DNA now, which is a surprise for a northern working class girl. Do you have a favourite opera? Well... A friend once said to me, you start with Puccini and you make the journey through, through Wagner and the, you end up back with Puccini. And strange enough, that's what's happened to me. And I was listening to Tosca again the other night and I thought, yes, it's still Tosca, which was the first opera I saw. Do you sing yourself? Um, not anymore. That's because I was brought up in a gospel tent in a pile, with a pile of evangelicals saving souls. And uh, evangelicals are very big on singing. So you were endlessly singing. So I've now given that up. What do you think you would have been had you not been a writer? This is a terrible question. Um, I had a, a vision of myself in, in the other life. I was in Manchester opening an art gallery and I was wearing a little blue Armani pinstripe suit. And for reasons I can't go into, I had a spray tan um, and, and Jimmy Choo's. And I was in one of those basement bars they love in Manchester drinking 20 quid martinis. And I thought, if I hadn't found art and books and poetry, I'd be a property developer. I'd still be drinking the 20 quid martinis. I'd have had two husbands and a boob job by now. And I'd live in a ranch style house with a jacuzzi because I was always going to get somewhere. So you can't see yourself at the heart of a big opera? No, I'm saying, no, no, no. I'd be there with my hot tub on the gravel and the Range Rover Sport. Are you a quick reader? Very quick, um, except for poetry, because my, my view is that poetry is, can only be read out loud and that you should read it to yourself in the mirror because you memorise it very quickly then and also you see the effect that it's having on you. It's a very interesting way to do it. So prose I can read at great speed but still satisfyingly. Poetry, slow. Do you not think you miss anything if you read quickly novels? Yes, but I can't help it. That's the trouble. Um, I learned to read quickly because my mother, Mrs Winterson, was always coming into the outside loo and snatching the books off me because books weren't allowed in our house. We only had six books. So I had to read in the loo with a flashlight. And A, it's freezing. And B, if you've got this menacing monster coming out from the kitchen to snatch you away, then you learn to read fast. So it was strategy. Do you think that novels should be more than entertainment? Do you think, I think they, they are? are? I think they are, exactly so. Um, I think the, the, the best novels, the strong text that we want to read, um, they do delight us, but they challenge us on every level. And the strange thing is that as you get older and you go back to read things that you read earlier, of course the text can't have changed in reality, but alchemically it does seem to because there's a different relationship between self and text. And that's what I love. I want the thing to grow with me. Um, you know, a one, a one, one read book is fine, but I prefer something that you can grow up with. Would you ever read your own novels once they've been published? No, I think you never do read your own books. You know, you write them, but you don't read them. And strangely, 25 years later, if I have to go back and read something like Oranges or The Passion, um, and I read them now, um, I'm, I'm delighted in a strange kind of way because I can't remember the person who wrote them. So they feel like someone I know very well, but it isn't me. Do you think you've got better as a writer? Is that the right sort of question? God, I hope so. <laughs> you guess that you get facility. You get a kind of you, you you do you get an ability whatever you work with for so long. Um, the trick is really to keep challenging yourself um, to do things differently, to extend your own process, to risk it, uh, to humiliate yourself. All of those things which is uncomfortable and on the edge. That's necessary. Otherwise, you might as well stop. How did you write your very first novel? Did you write by pen or with a typewriter? No, I wrote it by pen and pen and paper, mainly in the reading room of the British Museum. What do you do now 
to unwind? Are you a good relaxer? Can you relax easily? <laughs> Do I look like a relaxed person? Um, no, um, sex and running. Do you think? Not at the same time. Do you think a lot? Do you sometimes find yourself just thinking? I think non-stop. And the only way I can stop thinking is when I'm running. It's when my head empties completely. And for me, that's freedom. What is the most important thing in the world? Love. And that <laughs> is five minutes. I was trying to think of a last question. <laughs> that was a brilliant last question. <laughs> really we lovely did it. to see you. <laughs>